Hello guys and welcome in this new video on the game engine series. Now um, in the previous video we talked about camera and uh, we were able to move things according to the camera. Like here we have this scrolling background. You can see the tiles in the front are moving faster than the background. It actually feels like this background is not moving but it does. It's actually moving with a different uh, ratio than these tiles right here. Then that's the background. Um, it should be moving with a different ratio with a different speed so and we set all that in our camera class so if this is your first time watching this video i'll simply invite you to go back and check that out because it's pretty much important and uh, yeah in this video we're gonna be talking about collision we're gonna be handling some collision stuff because you can see right here our player isn't falling because we deactivate the the, the gravity effect on him because we didn't have any collision stuff so it was somehow uh, uh, it, it was somehow bad for us to let our player keep falling every time so but now we're gonna be uh, handling um, collision so that our player will simply hit the ground right here and stay and stay over it all the time and that's what we're gonna be doing in this video so before we get started I need to invite you guys to subscribe to medical channel it really means a lot for me I want to reach uh, like 5,000 subscriber before the uh, before the end of this year. I don't know if that's even possible. Maybe it could be more. So if you guys can simply go out and subscribe, it will really mean a lot for me. And uh, you can also support my work on Patreon. It's also where you will get some um, some access to some uh, repository that I have and you can download stuff. Let's get started. So, um, I'm a little bit lazy in this video. I'm not going to be doing everything like always. So, I already created it. So, I'm just going to explain it. And I, I'm sure you're going to go through this because that's easy. It's not complicated. So, I don't want to, you know, somehow start with this and, you know, have some stress with that. So, um, the first thing you need to do is to create a new class. I call it in my case Collision Handler, as you can see right here. So, you just hit class and you collision handler right here you make sure you create a new folder for that like here you see we created this folder called collision and you also make sure you create a header and a cpp file because that's important you want to you know somehow uh, write a function separately so we also want to make this class a singleton or static if you want to call it like that because we want to check only one collision Per time we don't want to do we, you don't want to somehow uh, make this class as a component which you attach uh, to an object and then use it later to handle collision but we want to make sure that we always check the collision with only one instance so that we can have control over all collision going around and yeah that's the reason why we actually make this as a singleton class so we actually know how to do that so that, that's something we have been doing throughout this video series and uh, I don't think I have to explain that much about that. So we define a static component as always, a collision handler, that's the name was wrong. You define a static component right here instance and you make sure your constructor is private because we don't want anyone to instantiate this handler because we only want to have one of these. And yeah, we just check over here if an instance already exists, then we return that one. If not, then we create. That's only what we're doing right here with this uh, get instance. Now we also have to define some important parameters down here in the private private section. You can see we've defined um, two component like tile map. This tile map is gonna be our matrix where we have our tile IDs because in order for us to make some uh, some uh, collision test and make sure the player is hitting something right now a wall or whatever you want to simply check if the tile if the tile id is different from zero if we have a tile id greater than zero then the player should actually be hitting that object and you want to handle collision and for that we also need to have a collision layer 
So if you remember, we created our tile map and in that tile map, we have a lot of layers, but we can simply just handle collision for, for them like that. We can choose to say, okay, we want to use this first guy right here as the collision layer. You can even name it like that right here and uh, somehow use that in your program to parse it. So that's also a possibility to do. Somehow name it with the collision name and then pass the collision layer later and use that to check if anything happened. But we can still make it for all layers. We just have to do a loop and check for each layer if anything is going on. So that's that's not a big deal. So that's why we need like this collision layer right here. And if you remember in our engine uh, over here, we have this guy called map uh, level map, which is like a map, a game map. So I think we created a function in this level map, which was called get tile or get layers, something like that. So we're gonna be accessing that and get those values and actually give that to our collision handler and we'll use that to check if anything is going on. So and for that we have two uh, method right here which is which we use to check our collision. We have for now only two adds of collision. We have collision between um, any kind of object and the map. So it could be the player or whatever. We later create our box collider for the player and we use that to check the collision. And as you can see right here, what we're actually using as a box as a box collider is our SDL rect. So we're actually using this rect because we want to draw like a rect around our player. And we're gonna be using that rect to make sure the player is actually hitting a wall or whatever it might be uh, facing. And we have this second function right here, which check the collision between two objects, between two uh, uh, box colliders. So it, this could be for the enemy and the player, for example. You want to check, okay, is the player hitting the enemy right now? And yeah, if yes, then you want to, you know, somehow uh, uh, decrease the the health of the player or the enemy, whatever, something like that. So that's basically what we actually do here. And make sure you include those things because those are going to be important for you. And uh, yeah, the engine is not actually important right here because we're not going to be using it here. We didn't define anything with the engine right here. But here on this in the CPP file, we definitely need to include that because. Oh, I'm sorry. Need to add. I just hit this keyboard. Engine. So uh, we've got this. So basically what we're doing right here, well, I forgot to write this because that's important. We need to initialize our, our map layer and the tile map. So we simply go ahead and say map layer, going on, layer tile map. Let me check the name I'm giving it here. This is M layer tile map and this is M collision, collision layer, okay. We wanna initialize our collision layer, that's actually what we wanna do. So we wanna pass this to a tile layer. If you remember the, the function, uh, the game map right here, let me go, go out and show you because I want you to know why I'm doing this. The game map right here takes layers, not tile layers. But since tile layers are inheriting from layers, that's why when I'm get this get function right here, where is this? This one, it returns, you know, like a vector from layer. And we want to pass that to tile layer. That's important. Because if you don't do that, then um, you will get like a layer and the layer doesn't actually have like a tile map and which is which could be a problem. That's why we actually putting this type case right here to make sure our our function will, will return engine and we want to say get instance we need like a get map function we don't have it right now we want to get this level map right here so we will switch over to our game engine switch over to our game engine so we go to core game engine and we want to add that 
function we can do it right here so what it basically does is it simply return our level map that we have right here and we can get that here so I'll say get map and we have it right here and if you remember this actually returns the vector of layer so our map right here has two layers so it returns a vector containing those two layers but we only want to check the collision for this guy right here so you can see this order is actually how they're going to be passed also so we have t1 um, i could call it collision layer collision like that nice save this so the way they're actually going to be passed is also going to be in this order so they also edit in this map right here in this vector right here in that same order so if i want to get right now I, I will say something like because it returns a vector a vector so i can simply say um let me check first what i'm looking for second so we want to first of all get the the map so um, we we'll get the map and then we we'll get the layers of that map so we get the layers and in that vector we return so the problem was actually that i thought this was returning our vector this is actually getting the map and in that map we want to get the layers and we want to get the front so this is like a vector function which is used to um to load the first value so we also have like back you can also use this to load the back we're using the front because you can see right here the collision is the first guy so if i do something like this then i will say back i'll take the last value and that's actually the idea so let, let's go ahead and leave it like this it doesn't matter for now so we leave it with back now we get our collision layer oh this is weird. now we get the value of our collision layer the next step is to get the tile map inside of that layer so we'll simply say something like layer tile map is equal to our, let's say collision tile map because it makes more sense collision tile map i mean for me you can still leave it like that for me it make more sense like that so collision tile map is equal to m collision layer and we get the tile map and now we have our tile map uh, loaded so we can simply use it right now to check any kind of collision now we have uh, as we said two methods to handle collision the first one simply check if those two rectangle overlaps so we have the overlaps on the x-axis so if it happens that one is over the other one so like if i read this window right here so if i have these two windows right here if it happened that this goes like this then we have an overlap this is actually the idea we have an overlap on the x-axis and the same thing on the y-axis is actually what we're checking there we're just checking if uh, something like that happens and we return the value of that right here and down here we check if an object overlap with a map so uh, with a map tile um our player since our player don't have like uh, 32 our tile map has 32 by 32 pixel since our player don't have that size he's i think bigger than that we need to always make sure we bring things uh, to that position but right? we need to scale that with the tile um tile size that's why we're doing this right here but uh, uh we did it right here for now we just do it like that we're gonna be creating variables later to handle uh, this um, since I created my map with this kind of information, so if I go to map here and I say map properties, you can see with 60, this is the, the number of uh, columns we have. This is the call count. And here we have the height 20. This is the row count. So that's why we actually define right here because we want to use that down here in the loop and check if the value of the tile map is greater than zero, then we probably have a collision that's actually what we're doing the rest up here is just to make sure that we um, we take this rect right here and put it uh, and check for the for the uh, for the uh, tile in the front in the back down and up that's actually what we're doing here
we check for the front down and the up so we want to put this guy right here because this is not object b so and this is actually what we're doing right here so that's basically uh, what we have to do for this class uh, for this um, collision handler we need to use it now to make our player hit the ground or the environment for that we need another component um, called um, um, box collider we need to have like a box collider which is gonna you know always give us information about if the player is hitting the ground or anything so just go ahead and create like collider and we want to put this in the physics folder you can put it in the collision folder if you want but i feel like it has more to do with physics so just want to put it there so uh, we want it to be a single header file we don't want to have a cpp file because there is not a lot to implement in that so simply say create make sure you have everything right collider and we create it yes so i'm just gonna somehow grab the code and paste it so you guys can see there is not a lot inside so we don't have to worry about doing anything special right here but i somehow want to remove this and uh, yeah remove this don't want to call this like that instead of doing i'm gonna say something like this box give me a second to figure out this so i think that's it perfect we don't have that box stuff anymore so what this actually uh, does is we have this get function so we have this sdr rectangles we i i, I said um, in the previous part that we we actually use a rectangle to to handle collision we are actually going to be drawing a rectangle around the player and uh, with that we'll check if anything is going on with the map or something like that and here we have we also have this second variable called buffer the buffer is actually there because uh, it will sometimes happen that the image the size of your player uh, is greater than actually the place let, let me show you for example what i mean because if i use an image it will be more here so let me go to the assets for example and i have to open this guy for example this guy doesn't have that much so it sometimes happens that this the part right here you can see if we have to if we have to create like a rect um um a collider for this guy right here we'll simply draw like a rect around here because it fills this space right here but it often happened that this place the pixel use inside of this image are we have some uh, empty spaces around here and that's why we actually need that buffer guy the buffer guy is there to make sure that we we actually uh, you know decrease the space around or you will have a, a sense like the player is coming and he's not hitting uh, is not touching the enemy but we feel like there is a collision that's why we want to handle that so this is how i chose to call it so buffer you can call it margin padding whatever i'm not doing html stuff right here so i don't want to use that kind of weird name but it doesn't matter so and here we have the set buffer function uh, method which is called on only on or when whenever you want because it often happens that you have a player with different sizes sometimes when you have different animations some animation have uh, more more spaces others um, less so you always want to make sure your box collider always fit to your player so you will use the set buffer to always uh, remove space or put more space or whatever you might want to do and here when we want to get our uh, when we want to set the value of of the the rigid of the the collider we always want to remove the buffer from that see that's why we're doing this right here and uh, yeah we simply use the get function to return the value of that box and we always check collision with that so we, if we switch over to our player so let me go where is there character and warrior character and warrior so this is why we're actually going to be using that function to check if anything is going on so we're going to be uh, doing that in this part but 
I think it's will it's it's better for us to stop right now because what we're gonna be doing here is gonna be somehow huge, and that would be too much information for one video. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be doing that in the next one, and there we'll actually implement our uh, our player states like we start implementing like jump, um, crouch, or uh, run, and we'll simply create like a state machine for our player and handle the current state of the player because we have a lot to do here there are some variables we need to define and if we just start right now that would be too much i think uh, what we've done right now it's enough and in the next video we're going to be talking about more stuff in the collision so um i thank you guys again for watching videos on the medical channel i also want to you know thank you guys for subscribing and for liking this video and share with other people who can actually have interest in this kind of content please also think about to go out and support me on patreon if you can it really means a lot and uh, it's not easy to spend that much time working on this kind of stuff because you know uh this is really something i enjoy and uh, if you guys can also support and it's also a good thing so thank you guys and see you in the next video Ciao.